And the last thing I'm going to talk about is evaluation. Now, I am very much aware that we've horsed through very, very quickly um, through the actual training needs analysis process. Because at this stage, if you're starting out on this training needs analysis journey, the key thing you're going to be doing is going away and coming up with a plan for identifying those needs. Um, so I'm conscious I've put a lot more weight on that than anything else, because that's going to be the thing you're going to do first. But when you get to the, the end of the process, when you get to the end of actually doing the training, um, if you're doing it right, you should have some evaluation um, attached to, to the training that, that you spent money on. So what I'm going to try and demonstrate now is how doing ongoing learning needs analysis exercises will actually help you understand and evaluate the training that you've done so far. So I'm, I'm not going to tell you that I'm doing away with evaluation because I'm really not. But what I'm going to try and do is use one process for carrying out both ends of, of the, the learning needs um, development cycle. So in terms of evaluation, the purpose of evaluation is to demonstrate value for money. At the end of the day, that's what we're going to be asked for from any organization. So again, value for money. For me, it hinges on three key areas. The impact on your business. So did things change in the business? The impact on productivity. So is the business more productive? Are we better, quicker, faster, smarter doing what we do? And then the impact on our people. Has there been some sort of positive impact on our people? And if you scrunch your eyes up and, and look at this, you'll see three key levels there. And if you hark back to the earlier slide and my discussion, my in-depth discussion on cake, um, you could almost imagine this being the same as those three levels of the cake. Um, the business then being the organizational needs, the productivity being the tasks that we carry out and what we're actually doing in the organization. And the people's level then is the individual needs bit. Um, so we're kind of looking at the th same three key areas, but we're looking for the impact on them. So the next slide then we're moving on to then takes us through how we actually do an evaluation. Now, again, this workshop and this, this webinar isn't really long enough to take you through how to do evaluation. The ideal for me would be that we develop um, an evaluation workshop going forward. However, with, with us dealing with crisis at the minute, it's kind of on the longer end of the agenda. But ideally, I would like to do more work on this going forward. And I, I hope to do that um, in, in the future of my role. But um, in terms of evaluation, if this is something that you particularly want to do in your organization, get in touch because we can come up with a solution for you. But for me, evaluation, um, I looked at the traditional Kirkpatrick model. And what I've tried to do then is, is sort of copy Kirkpatrick over to what we're already doing and, and seeing that we can take learnings from each of them. But for Kirkpatrick, there was four levels. And the four levels were reaction, learning, behavior, and results. So what Kirkpatrick tried to do was, was try and demonstrate that at each of these four levels, well, there was some impact in the organization. Now, copying those methods over then, level one reaction. Um, I went along to a training exercise and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. We normally capture that through happy sheets. Um, obviously, if you're doing training remotely, it might be um, an online question or something that you get sent instead. But um, what we're looking for then is immediate reaction. So following on from the training, did you actually learn anything? And post-training surveys or questionnaires can be used to do that. But when you think about it, this is where we're having those individual discussions with people who've been to training. So if we're doing the individual needs well, we should be able to pick that up from the likes of their um, Wonder Ones or their, their um, um, interviews with their managers or their, their um, annual appraisals. So we should be able to pick all those up from there. M moving into the deeper levels of evaluation, and level two would be the learning level. So we went along to a training. It was really good fun. But we actually learned something that we didn't know or, or we picked up something new that we hadn't used before. So at this level, typically um, to measure it, we, we tend to do tests before and after the training. So having some level of um, where your skill set was before the training and then where your skill set was after the training. So, you know, when you're on a training course and they do that end of training, that, that skill demonstration where it's a little assessment or a test. This is what we're talking about here. Um, so it's how we actually test the levels of skill that people have. And again, this is our task analysis stage. So if we do regular task analysis, we should be able to see where the levels of competence for our staff are changing um, and where their abilities are actually increasing or, or decreasing um, as training is, is picked up and sometimes then forgotten. So again, this keeps us assessing the level of consciousness and competence, but also in terms of being able to assess the task um, analysis stage as well. So if we just do this on an ongoing basis, we should get this part of the, the results from comparing them over time. Third level for Kirkpatrick is the behavior level. So it's not enough just to learn something. It's what that Im what impact that learning has then on your behavior. So do you do something different because of, of what you learned on the training session? So again, for behavioral um, 
understanding to evaluate behaviour than we tend to do observations and interview over time to assess uh, change, the relevance of change and sustainability of change. And again, this is very much about keeping us in that consciously competent or unconsciously competent level. So again, for us then, this is about doing those observations over time. So whether it is looking at your task analysis over time or your individual analysis over time, it's about having regular check-ins um, and doing this regularly to keep up to date with what people are learning and how they're actually using those skills. And the, the last level then for Kirkpatrick is the results level. So being able to tag training into changes in the organization that give you better results for your organization. So again, for Kirkpatrick, the way Kirkpatrick actually um, set about doing this was to, to try and, and look at measures that are in place in, in your organization and um, those management reporting systems and look to the changes over time in terms of your, your business output, that high level business output, and then try and, and, and allocate that back then to training or trying to tie that back to training. Um, in terms of evaluation, this is sort of the, the, the highest level you can get to. And most organizations don't even, well, most organizations are, are very loose in terms of how they tie the benefits of training into the, the overall output of the organization. But what you should see over time, where you've invested in sales, if you highlight um, and, and look at the key business measures around sales, you should see improvement there if you've done good sales training. If you're looking at um, customer service, you're doing training on customer service in a particular period, you should see a marked improvement in your customer service results. And again, it's about as the learning and development person or the person in charge of the training team, that you then get sight of those key management reports so that you can then start to look at where things are going up or down, where there's impacts, um, and actually taking the glory and taking some of the, the, the recognition for actually having done that and tying that impact back down to the training that you've actually done. So we tend not to do this in learning development. We tend to do the training and then sit back and go, we hope that that has done what you wanted to do. Whereas I would be more proactive in terms of going into the business and saying, right, what are your key performance indicators? Because I'm going to try and make an impact on them. I'm going to try and have an impact on them going forward. And if you come to invest in I, you're investing in I client, you come to invest in I for, for funding. This is one of the things we're going to ask you for. We're going to ask you to be able to demonstrate to us that your key performance indicators have been impacted by the training that you've done. So again, if you know you're going to be asked for this at the end, having a thought and, and having exposure to this at the start will give you the key um, performance indicator information that you're going to need then to, to monitor your, your training impact as you go forward. So this is the ideal, but what this is highlighting is the need to do learning needs analysis, training needs analysis on an ongoing basis. Find the best processes that work and do them on an ongoing basis. Because if you do that, then you'll be fulfilling all needs of the development cycle. So the training needs analysis, design and delivery stage that you do as normal and evaluation will all be fulfilled through doing really good needs analysis on an ongoing basis. So I realise that it's been a bit of a whirlwind journey, but I very much appreciate if you have any questions, if you could put them onto the question section, onto the, the chat section of the webinar um, now, and um, myself and my colleague Michael are going to go through your questions and try and answer as many of them as possible. So please, there's no such thing as a, as a stupid question. It's more stupid not to ask the question. But if you're in a position where you need to run off and you can't stay on, I um, totally understand that. So um, make sure to take the contact details um, and get in touch with us going forward. Um, as I say, my name is Maeve Carabine. Some of you might already know me from, from working with me um, in the organisation or have been to some of our workshops previously. Um, don't be a stranger. My email address is maeve.carabine at investni.com. We also have an inbox dedicated just to, to skills inquiries and to training inquiries. So if you need um, specific advice and you happen to forget my name, I totally understand. But we have an inbox skills advice at investni.com. So send any inquiries through there too. And, and they're constantly monitored and managed. Um, any other things that you might need outside of skills, um, any facet of business at all, don't be afraid to go on and check Invest Nice website. Um, and also look at the likes of the event schedule going forward from that. So the, the main Invest Nice website is www.investnice.com. And yes, I still use all the W's because <laughs> I'm that traditional. Um, but on the Invest Nice homepage, you'll find an events link at the bottom of the screen. Click on it and it'll tell you about our events. Um, at the minute, our events, obviously we're not doing any live events. Everything is being done by a webinar. So this is about as live as you get. Um, but we've got lots and lots and lots going on. So please be sure to check in with that. Um, and as I say, if you are 
um, more of are happier to, to speak directly over the phone. Um, our general inquiry line, our, our, our business helpline is 0800 181 4422. And if you ask the advisor there to send an inquiry straight through to the skills advisor um, or the skills team, they'll know to send it through to, to, to myself and, and Michael and our team. Um, and we'll get your inquiry um, whenever they, they, they process it. So don't be afraid to do that. But in the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much um, for trusting Avesta and I um, to give you this advice and give you this learning. And please get in touch if there's anything at all that we can do to help you. And good luck with your, your business and good luck seeing yourself through the, the, the challenging months ahead. But please keep us in mind if there's anything at all that you feel you need, you feel that we can help with. Thank you.